And today we're going to go over how to normalize your peak areas and intensity values, maybe peak heights, that you got using the lip and match workflow by using class-specific internal standards. So the files you'll need to run this script are either negative, positive, or both. Um, the feature tables and the outputs from Lipid Match, and an internal standard table. If we look at the feature tables, we can see that you have your identifications, but most importantly, no matter what identification software, you'll need a column that has mass to charge, a column with retention time, a column with the lipid class, and a column with the lipid adduct. So any feature table with identifications and these respective columns can be used by lipid match quant. The internal standard table you're going to have to generate yourself for lipid match quant probably be the most time intensive part of using lipid match quant. So in your first column, under name, starting at the third row, you would start to type in your different internal standards. And you can name these however you want. This is for your own use. It will show up based on the internal standards that were used to quantify each feature. Then you'll have a retention time for each of those internal standards. So in order to determine this retention time, you have to manually look at your data. Uh, we recommend using a blank with your internal standards spiked in. And then you can look for those intense internal standard peaks in your blank and type down the retention times for each one here. Lipid, uh, lipid normalizer needs the retention times and mass to charges in order to find your internal standards within your feature table. So your feature table should have picked out the internal standards. Now you'll also have a column for each of the adducts that you would expect based on your chromatography and mass spectrometry method. So you can insert additional columns here. For example, if you had a formate and now you also had an acetate column, you could add your acetate column here. Oops. Well, you get it, etc. In order to calculate the masses of your internal standards for each of those adducts, you can use Lipid Pioneer, a tool developed in Bowden's lab, and Lipid Pioneer can be found at the CSIM tools webpage. That's S-E-C-I-M. If you type that into Google, you'll find the CSIM tools webpage. In that tool, you can just type in the name of your internal standard, and it will show you the masses of each app. So you'd paste those masses here. If you don't know the mass of an addict for some reason, or you don't expect that addict based on your chromatography, you can place an NA where that mass would be. Now, after you fill out all your adducts, which should all be adjacent to each other, the next column, right after the adducts, should be a classes column. And in the third row, and down is for each internal standard, you type in the acronyms or names of those lipid classes as they would appear in your feature table. So for example, here's PE170170 is our internal standard. If we have PE, plasmanol PE, plasminol PE, ox PE, monomethyl, dimethyl, phosphatidyl, lysol, PE, etc. 
all of these different classes, if it found those classes, it would use the PE internal standard to normalize those. For PG, you can see we have a single internal standard. Note that if you have multiple internal standards, they're each separated by spaces, and that you shouldn't have spaces in the name of your class or the acronym of your class. Now, after you have decided which classes to be normalized using which internal standards, then you can type in all of your samples. So in this case, let's say we only have three samples. You would only put three samples in. And then for each sample, you should put the exact quantity of internal standards spiked in. Note that if you wanted to normalize by weight or protein, you could do that here by taking, for example, if we had 24.25 micrograms of lipid spiked in, you could divide that by however much protein, and then you have micrograms per protein, which would then be used to normalize your features. Note that this row you can use for calculations, etc., but it's not used by the software. So, for example, if I wanted to normalize by microliters and I put 40 microliters each, and this was micrograms, I could just do divide. Now, also note, very important, is that the order of these columns should match the order of your feature tables. For example, here you can see sample one, two, and three in that order. So this should also be sample one, two, and three. Normally, lipid match due to MZ mine shuffles the sample order. And so you can sort, for example, left to right and by row one, and then also sort the column names here, left to right by row one, to make sure that they're sorted. Same. Now, after you've created your internal standard table, and you have your feature tables, then you can run lipid match quant. So if you go to your lipid match distribution, or you download lipid match quant directly from the CSIM webpage, um, you can start using it in the distribution of lipid match. It's in additional tools. And here you can find, actually, since it's not quantification, I'll call it lipid normalizer. And then you'll find your lipid normalizer R script. If you double click your lipid normalizer R script, then you can press Control A and click Run. This will bring up the GUI interface. Sometimes it may occur behind some of your windows. So you minimize your windows. And first you want to find the folder that has your data. So here we have examples. SRM 1950. We select our feature table. Let's start with negative mode. You do each polarity separately. And select your internal standard table. Note that since it does each polarity separately, if you've combined your negative and positive ion mode data, then you shouldn't use lipid quant on the combined data. You should use it on the separate negative and positive polarity data. Mass the charge tolerance for finding your internal standards in the feature table. So this would be plus or minus 0 0.005 Daltons. Your retention time tolerance, so plus or minus in this case 0.15 minutes. Number of addicts. So here, you can see the lipid normalizer settings. If you double click that, it will have a description of each of those settings. So that will help you. 
And in this one, we look at our example data. The number of addicts is going to be in our internal standard table. So in this case, if you highlight, you'll see that we have five addicts. So we would type in five addicts. Then we have our sample start column. So for this, we'll need our feature table open. Here we can see that the start is at column F, which is column 6, which you can see down here. And then the end is column 8, which you can see down here, of our samples. So we can put that in. Start column 6, end column 8. Our mass to charge column. So now again, we're going to be looking at our feature table. And we can see that our mass to charge column is in column 3, and our retention time column is in column 4. So we put 3 and 4. Your class ID column, which should have the classes in the same notation as you put in the internal standard table. So in this case, it's column K, which is column 11, and the addict column is in column 12. So we put 11 and 12. The numeric data start row is the day, day is the row in which your intensities or your peak areas start, as well as your mass to charges and retention times. So in this case, it's row three. And sample grouping row, we don't use, so you can put any number there. Then, making sure that you loaded your feature table and internal standard table, you can click Run Normalization. And now, you look in your folder. It runs very quickly, and you should have the feature table with the internal standards found. So these are the internal standards that were found in your feature table. You can see that it found the PE, the PG, the PC, the LPC. And even if they didn't have names in the feature table, it can still find them by retention time and mass to charge. And so here are the names of the internal standards found. Now, you can also see the normalized data. So this would be your final data, normalized by internal standards. And there's some additional columns, too. So there's this is quantified column, and it can be score of 1, 2, or 3. So score of 1, for example, means that you had a ceramide, class ceramide, and you found an internal standard that was of class ceramide with the same matching adduct. Or that you decided, for example, for this oxidized PC to quantify all oxidized PCs with the PC internal standard. So a score of one means it found the class that you told it to find for that internal standard at the same adduct. A score of two, which we don't have here, means that it found the adduct, but not the same lipid class, and a score of 3 means it found neither the same lipid class nor addict. You can see, as we just showed, that the internal standard species, so the internal standard used, is shown in a column, so you know which internal standard was used to normalize which lipid feature, and the addict of that standard that was used is shown as well. After normalization, then you can look at the statistics video using Metabo Analyst. 
continue to your workflow.